So this video, I'm gonna lay down one of my most powerful tools, which is what I call the five signs of an abusive partner. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to identify a potentially abusive partner so that you can stay away from that relationship. If you are new to this channel, our mission is to encourage people to rethink self-defense by addressing and clarifying many of the myths that are commonly held on the subject. We got more content like this coming, so be sure to hit the thumbs up to let me know that you like it and hit the subscribe and the bell so you don't ever miss one of our videos. So the myth that we're talking about today is the idea that the person who's going to attack you is going to jump out of nowhere while you're walking to your car. And whereas these kind of attacks do happen, they are actually not as common as the martial arts field or the self-defense market may lead you to believe. According to the United States Department of Justice, the majority of violent crimes are the victim being attacked by someone they know well. Even more telling is that the National Institute of Justice says that 90% of sexual assaults on women are done by someone they know well in a place that they are comfortable. And even more troubling, that same report says that an estimated 50% of sexual violence goes unreported. Whereas it is important for you to have good situational awareness and if you're in a place that you're uncomfortable to perhaps have a weapon on hand. This is not trying to discredit the validity of that side of the self-defense world. It's just addressing the fact that we don't address that the majority of these situations are not what we are actually teaching. One of the most potent skills that I think is paramount to understanding how to protect yourself is learning how to identify potentially abusive people before it gets too out of hand. Understand that even when someone is attacked by someone they know well, it's probably not a completely random out of the blue event. So this video, I'm gonna lay down one of my most powerful tools, which is what I call the five signs of an abusive partner. There are many more signs than just these five, but it's good to have a quick checklist in the back of your head that if someone starts ticking off too many of these, you know that this isn't a relationship that you wanna continue. Whether this be a relationship with a romantic partner, or a friend. So those five signs of abusive partner are controlling behaviors, a history of violence, animal abuse, property destruction, and always playing the victim. So let's break this down. First is controlling behaviors. This could be a video in and of itself. There's a million of them. But ultimately, if someone is trying to control your actions, if someone's trying to control where you go, who you talk to, those are things that are controlling behaviors. Oftentimes these are not intentional decisions, they are more habits that the person has developed over their life to gain as much control over their environment as possible. Ways of talking to people, way of treating people that allows them to keep a sense of control over their life. Ultimately, as an adult, no one should be in charge of you. You are your own boss and if anybody else is trying to be your boss, that's a big red flag in my book. The second is a history of violence. It seems pretty logical, but it's a thing that oftentimes goes missed, is that violent people are violent. If somebody has a history of being violent with other people, whether it's losing their temper, fighting for no reason, getting in trouble with the law, or even more telling, having abused someone else, I wouldn't assume that you're gonna be an exception. So if this person has a long history of violence in their background, it's probably a person that you should be cautious with developing a deep relationship with. The third should be an obvious red flag, and that's animal abuse. One of the most common trends among serial killers is that they usually get their start by torturing little animals. Oftentimes, animal abuse is fulfilling a kind of power fantasy that will oftentimes escalate into someone attacking a human, which I know is pretty intense, but we aren't even necessarily talking about just like obvious things like torturing an animal, but keep an eye out for small things. Obviously, if someone is punching an animal, it would be a huge red flag, but what about if they punish a animal with too much severity? Or what about if they bully the animal for no reason? There's some subtlety here that can easily go unnoticed because you just may think they play rough. 
but watch the animal. If they're not enjoying the contact, it's not okay for them to do it. The fourth sign of a potentially abusive partner is property destruction. Something I oftentimes say is that it is not abnormal for a 13-year-old boy to lose his temper and punch a hole in the wall. It is incredibly abnormal for a 25-year-old man to do the same thing. If someone cannot control their fist when they get angry, they are inherently dangerous to be around. But even worse off, many times property abuse becomes much more vindictive and targeted. For example, I've had some people train with me who've given me reports of an abusive partner destroying something of theirs. Perhaps you play an instrument and they break it because they are mad at you. That's a tremendous red flag and highly unacceptable. As I've already said, if the person cannot control their fist, then they are a dangerous person to be around. The fifth is probably the most interesting, which is always playing the victim. The interesting thing about this mindset is that the person who is always playing the victim genuinely believes that they are being victimized. Even though it is a form of manipulation over the people around them, it's actually so ingrained in them that they believe that their actions and their feelings are perfectly justified. There's big, giant red flags versions of this. For example, if in every argument that you've ever had, somehow it's always your fault, and no matter what happened, they can always turn it around and aim it at you, that's very manipulative. And once again, that's that always playing the victim thing. But it can also be more subtle, something that you may not notice. For example, how loud you are in the den shouldn't affect their ability to put together a piece of IKEA furniture. Or maybe the person has been fired from several jobs and it's always someone else's fault. So a quick recap of this list is controlling behaviors, a history of violence, animal abuse, property destruction, and always playing the victim. Ultimately, when it comes to self-defense, preventing the thing from happening in the first place is always ideal. If you've made it to the end of this video, and many people comment before they do, include the word lamp in your comments so that I know you actually made it to the end of the video. And also, if you made it to the end of this video, you clearly enjoyed this content, so please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and click subscribe and that little bell so that you'll never miss one of our videos. If you live in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me, all the information you need to do so is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. And if you live too far away from me to train, you do have opportunities to train with me via Zoom. Once again, all of that information is available to you at theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.